Hello. Hi. Welcome to the Nick Girls. This is episode 192. Yes, it's February the 2nd, 2014. It's Groundhog's Day. It is. It's also Super Bowl Sunday. So that's it's pretty the, cool. It's the big game. We don't want to get sued. Oh. They're very litigious about using that word. Really? Yes. Huh. Um. <laughs> that's interesting. Do you know if the groundhog saw his shadow or not? He did see his shadow, which means more winter. Oh, wonderful. Groundhog's Day is also a wonderful film by Bill, with Bill Murray. It's like oh, my yes. favorite film. It's a classic. I might um, have to watch it tonight. Anyway. So I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Les. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. And this is going to be a light week. Um, we both just had a lot going on and there's not been a ton of progress. And as it is the big game... We're recording <laughs> earlier in the day, and we both have stuff we have to do, so it's going to be probably a shorter one. But we do want to go ahead and, and record and get one out there. So there we go. do works in progress. What are you working on? I am in the middle of a row on um, my 50 row Charlotte. I'm on row, I'm going to say 46. Yeah, right around 46. Um, you can't see it because it's all bunched on the needles. But it's almost done. It's a very cool pattern by Susan B. Anderson. I'm knitting this. I actually, okay. So, um, Madonna Earth, I think it was, gave me a compliment on my hand spun on Ravelry. And she's like, I love seeing your pictures of hand spun on your, um, in your stash. And I was like, I have pictures of hand spun in my stash. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I just put one up, but I couldn't remember what else was there. And this yarn was there. From when, like, oh, so you know what it is? Yeah, now? so it is. Um, it's right here. It is hand spun. It was Spunky Eclectic Club. See, I was kind of right uh -huh. in the rosebud colorway, and it's Cordale. Cool. So I have. See what happens when you keep track of things online. It's amazing, <laughs> genius. Uh, it's two hundred and forty total yards is what I started with. So I have the pattern calls for two twenty. So I have a little bit extra, and I've. Which is good, because I accidentally increased when I wasn't supposed to. So <laughs> We'll call that just your artistic... Yeah. Design, welcome thing. to my life. Um, <laughs> so I'm knitting the 50 Rochelette by Susan B. Anderson out of this hand-spun on size 10 needles, which are, and I'm using my signatures, um, 6 millimeter for those of you in the... Embracing the metric revolution. Yes. <laughs> or live in a country that actually yeah. does match work. <laughs> um, so that's the first thing on my needles. Uh, the Vesper socks that I was working on in... Um, they're in a box somewhere. Mom packed them and oh. brought them over to the new house. But I don't know what box they're in. <laughs> I haven't been able to find them by unpacking boxes. <laughs> so they're somewhere and they'll reappear when I find them. But in the meantime... I was winding yarn Friday night, and so I wound some String Theory Continuum, which I got from the Loop EU when they started carrying her yarn. And the that Florey... is not the one that I suggested. No, it's not. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're not the boss of me. Apparently not. <laughs> In the Florite colorway, it is eight rows purple, three rows black, eight rows gray, three rows black. And I have a wee little toe. I don't even have that much on it. See? Just a bit of the purple, black, a bit of gray. And it's going to look like, well, this is what it looks like in the ball. Oh, how did that, whatever. Apparently I was punching holes in something. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it looks like that all caked up. It is in my Fat Squirrel Fibers bag, which she gave me last year for my birthday. Aww. And um, that's Amy Beth, and she's got a, pack, a podcast called Fat Squirrel Speaks. The Fat Squirrel Speaks. The Fat yeah. Squirrel Speaks. And um, I've not had enough caffeine today. Clearly. Well, car shopping kind of interrupted mm. the caffeine process of Sundays. So that's what it's going to be. It is on Haya Haya Sharps. I'm guessing these are size one. They were, well, ooh, they've got something on them. They do have writing on them. Hiya Hiya Sharp says one 2.25 millimeters. Yeah. So it's on those, and I will start knitting on those 
more. I just started them yesterday at the Oxford Festival. But I was trying to get the Charlotte done by today. And that didn't happen. Although I'm close. It'll probably be... It'll definitely be done for next week. Yeah. So. You can knit on it while you watch the big game. I have my secret knitting to work on for that. Oh, that's so. true. I forgot. Deadline knitting takes priority. Um, so I've only got one project this week. I have not cast anything on in well over a month. Um, I've been on sort of a finishing kick. And I want to embrace it while I can because, you know... In a few months, I'll have a bunch of unfinished stuff, so I, I try to embrace the un, the finishing when I can. And um, this is the left front of the Caulfield cardigan. Last cool. week, I had just cast on the bottom. Wow, you made some progress on that. And this is knit out of Quinson Company Sparrow, which is their linen. Um, it's not the most forgiving thing to knit with, but uh, or wind. But I'm hoping that the FO will be worth it. And I'm using 3.5 millimeter U.S. size 4 needles. And um, I've started decreasing for the armhole. Cool. So I've got a wee bit left to go. Um, this is the other side. And the left, or the, yeah, I'm working on the right front. So the left front and the back have been done for months. So after that, you'll have the sleeves to do. I'll have the sleeves, yeah. I and a button band, right? Together. Huh? Is there a button band or is it yeah, built in? Yeah, I, I modified the pattern so it's built in. As written, you would have to go back and add it, but I okay. wanted to. So it looks like I've got about this much left. You could totally bust that out this week. So, yeah, I probably will. Um, and that, again, it's the Caulfield Cardigan by Amy Herzog. But I took the button band or edging, and I don't know what all that bracket is. <coughs> so I was doing something. Um, I took this uh, sort of drapey button band edging from a vest in her Fit to Flatter book. Uh huh. And then I'll continue this edging up and just join it behind the neck. She'll and draft it. it. Mm hmm. Using Kitchener stitch, I would assume. Uh, yes, but it's in ribs, so I don't know. I'll have to. I know there's a way to do it, but I don't know about heart, so I'll have to look it up. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's pretty. That's all that I've knit on this week because it's the last thing that I really have on the needles. I have the vivid blanket, where um, it's individual squares, uh -huh. but I just haven't been feeling that. So I'll um, I'll probably have cast something on next week, maybe. Or Are I might you just... going to do Olympic knitting? I don't know. I haven't decided. Like, there's nothing that's calling to me that it really needs to be done during the Olympics, so... I don't you know. could knit a sweater during the Olympics. Yeah, it depends on how quickly I can finish spinning. So, we'll you see. You could spin for a sweater during the Olympics. Well, I'm halfway to it now, so... That's pretty cool. We'll get to that in spinning. Yep. So, I have no FOs. I have no FOs or no, and no spinning. Because my spin 365 has come to an end after 20 some days. It happens. Um, this week was bas middle school basketball tournament, so I kept book on Tuesday and Thursday and had an after school literacy night for three hours on Monday. So that kind of ate up most of my free time this week. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I do have some spinning. I got sucked in. <laughs> Laura and Jessica, who is Show Me Your Knits, she's a mod on our board, and Lynn, who is Lindsay M on RAV, and she also is the um, manager for the Loopy U, office manager. I don't know. She works at the Loopy U in um, Colorado. And she's a friend of ours. And so Laura and Jess and Lynn um, decided they were going to spin for the Less is More cardigan. I actually have it pulled up because I thought ahead on this one thing. And Lynn and Jess are both almost done. They've already done all their spinning, and they're almost done with the knitting. And this is, I know this is Jess's, like, fourth or fifth hand spun sweater. She's amazing. Um, so this is what it looks like. It's basically the concept is to take four or six, depending on your size, um, individual four-ounce bumps of fiber, and then sort of blend them together so that it can be a continuous garment. So, because of my size, I'm a larger person, I needed six individual four ounce um, bumps, braids, whatever you want to call them. And um, I picked them out, and they're all into the world um, bumps. 
and I'll show you. I've gotten most of, well, half the spinning done. So let me pull up a picture and show you what they look like. And Laura, if I start to ramble, please tell me. No, you're fine. Um, okay, this is what it looks like. The picture will rotate. Dang it. Anyway, so there's six braids. They're all into the world. They're a mixture of Polworth, um, BFL, and Merino. So I they're have... all like more of a shorter staple besides the BFL, soft next to the skinwear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have six of the same fiber type in sort of colors that work, so I just sort of opted to blend the fibers, which I think is fine. I mean, oh yeah. I think if they're similar fiber composition, you're pretty much okay. So I have six bobbins. So I'll pull out one of each. This is the first one. And the color, they're all into the world. The colors are, this is Don't Blink. Yep. Um, this is Godswood. I have my Godswood sitting right here. No, maybe not. No, I can't remember what this one was. Never mind. <laughs> and then there's Take It to the Bridge. I like that one. I like all her stuff. I so you can see they sort of have the purple, green, teal colors in common. Although this is just the outer layer, so there's there's more colors underneath. Mm -hmm. And then the next color is Children of Time, and that's a superwash merino. Cool. So it, it loses some of the teal and blends more toward the purple. And then there is the Rhinebeck colorway, which is BFL. I love the Rhinebeck colorway. I haven't got my hands on that one yet. So that darkens the purple and then it introduces the orange. And then the final colorway is End of Innocence, which is BFL again. Uh huh. That's a and pretty that one. Brings back some of the lighter purple and brings the green and orange together. So is that a BFL or a superwash BFL? Um, this is BFL, this is superwash BFL. Okay. So it's really sort of a mishmash. So the idea is that you would take. Um, you blend it, it's all a two-ply. I mean, I guess she, I think Jess did a three-ply because she's she a did. superhero. Well, she likes three-plies. She likes the structure of a, a three-ply, the roundness, better for sweaters. Just mm. better in general. She tends to spin more three-plies. Continue. She's a superhero with spinning. Like, I want to be her when I grow up. But anyway, the idea better. is that you would take, yeah. you apply the colors together, and then you would, there's a blending system in the pattern. So you do X rows of this color, and then X rows of this color and it blends it together so there's not like a sharp color change. Similar to what you would do if you were alternating skeins on um, a sweater. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I'm doing something different because I'm ornery and I just have to be different and you guys know that by now. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm blending bobbins together. So this is color one and this is color two so I'm going to uh, I've got two bobbins of each, so I'll blend one of bobbin one, or one of color one with one of color two, and then one of color two with one of color three, and so on. Why don't on you talk on. about the bobbins that you have them on? Okay. So these are storage bobbins, and these are uh, made or sold or distributed by Shocked. Mm -hmm. And you can get, I think I got 10 of them for like 15 or $20, I don't know, something inexpensive like that. And I got them for Tour de Fleece so that I could spin on a regular bobbin and then wind it off onto this bobbin. I have a bobbin winder. Um, and then wind it off onto this bobbin so that I wouldn't have to, because these are super cheap and if they, you know, they're sturdy though, like they're not just going to fall apart after a couple of uses. So you can spin a whole bunch and not have to have, pay 35 or 40 dollars per bobbin depending on your um, mm -hmm. meal maker. Um, and also, I write on mine, so this is this is color one, second bob, and this is color two, first bob, and so that way it's easier for me to keep track of what's yeah. what. Um, but I'm going to blend the colors together. I've been on a spinning spree, so I've spun 12 ounces since Thursday, so about four ounces a day. Now, the weight of this sweater is a DK weight. Mm -hmm. So you want to do around a fingering or about a 22 wraps per inch single, and I... I check it, I would say, every 10 minutes or so I check. And, sometimes and you do that with a control card? Yes, which I don't have with me. I'll have to show you all next week. But it measures, you know, the thickness against what um, 
the thickness needs to be. So um, it may be a little less than the what it needs to be a finished 11 wraps per inch. So the singles need to be 22. Um, mm -hmm. So it may be slightly thinner in some places, but it'll be fine. It's a hand spun sweater. The colors are going to vary. It's not going to be perfect, and that's fine. It doesn't bother me. So um, I'm not going to make it a cardigan, though. So the pattern says it's a cardigan. I'm actually going to make it a pullover with a kangaroo pocket because that's kind of, that's what my Miranda is, and I wear it all the time, and it makes uh -huh. me happy. So I'm going to make another one. I'm just going to make it in hand spun. And now I feel like I have been talking for five years, so um, yeah. it's your turn. So I've spun a ton this week. I'll hopefully have spent a ton next week. I really want to ply, but I want to wait until I'm done spinning before I ply. And it's good to let the bobbin sit a little bit, too. Yeah, to rest. Uh, I'm trying to think. We have a question um, from our question thread, and it is from Mandy Pinecone, who asks, what are your, what are your go-to needle brands? So let's talk about, let's start, because um, I'm the boss apparently, let's start by talking about interchangeables and the interchangeable sets we have, and then maybe fixed circulars. I've, m neither of us really use um, straight needles anymore mm -mm. as a whole. Um, I do use some DPNs. Leslie doesn't use DPNs at all. If I can avoid it, I do. She's a I magic use them for like. If I have to do sweater surgery or something, I'll use them, but mm -hmm. I don't use them for actual knitting. So let's start with um, interchangeable sets. I have too many interchangeable sets. <laughs> we both do. Um, I have a pink Janice set. That was my first interchangeable set I ever got. My mom bought it for me when I was 18. Mm -hmm. um, and really, it does not get used very often anymore. It's kind of like my emergency backup set. My second set that I ever got was the Knit Picks Harmony. Um, that gets used on bigger projects because I have 60 inch cables for that. Yeah. So I can use that on bigger projects. Plus the points are pretty sharp and pointy. I do have some of the metal, metal tips for that as well. Um, Eloise just got the Caspian tips. They're really pretty. They have them in the, they're like a blue and they have a blue cord. Are they wood? Uh huh. Yeah. Hmm. Um, they're really, really pretty. They had them in the um, Lost City booth yesterday, and I was oh. very tempted. And then I was like, "That is silly and frivolous." Um, so I have the Knit Picks Harmonies, and which they might have renamed now, and the Metals. I have my third set would have been. Let's see. I don't know what my third set was. What other interchangeables do I have? I have the um, uh, the wooden Chai Goose that I got this summer at TNNA, which I use a lot. And I also have the Addy tur uh, Clicks and the Clicks. Lace. And then I have the um, wooden version of the Heavy Metals, the Die Craft. I have a few um, wooden. A couple tips. Yeah. yeah. And the interchangeables. So that is what I have for interchangeables. Um, my go-to out of those, I would say, are either the Clicks or the Chai Goos right now. They just, they both have sharp tips, and I enjoy them. When it, I have the Bamboo Chai Goos. Um, so it depends on my project. If I'm working with a fiber that's more slick, like a, a silk or a bamboo or a linen, I tend to gravitate towards wood so it's not like jumping off. Um, the needles, but if I'm working with a wool, I tend to gravitate towards metal tips. So that's my interchangeable experience. You have different interchangeable needles. I do. Um, while I appreciate the beauty of wooden needles, I don't like using them. Um, I sort of keep a death grip on my needles, so any wooden ones are going to eventually warp, plus they're I know it sounds weird, and I'm okay that it sounds weird, but there's something in like the oils in my skin, and the way that they react with the wood in the needle, it just smells weird. And like everybody's allowed their their crazy little thing, I and mean, I probably have ten people's worth, but um, I just don't enjoy using wood needles. So I, almost all of mine are 
metal. Um, I did start I did start with the Denise ones when I first started knitting and I do still use those sometimes for knitting hats because um, they, it has a one of the cables uh -huh. is really short yeah so it, you can do it without having a magic loop or anything so I do still use those for um, hats but um, largely I don't use those as much. Um, I have a set of Addy Clicks like Laura with the lace tips. I have Hiya Hiya um, interchangeables which is what these are and I have chow goo interchangeables and um, I have a couple of sets of the signature they're not called interchangeables they're called something else I wouldn't consider those interchangeables I agree because you have to buy cables specific to the tip size um, they're called something else but I can't remember what they are um, convertibles the, convertibles there you go and signatures are fantastic needles I'm not um, yeah, I was going to talk negative. about that when we get to fixed circulars more. Because um, I consider those fixed circulars for the most part. I, I would I would tend to agree with that. As far as interchangeables, the ones that I get the most use out of, that I go to all the time, are my Hiya Hiya interchangeables. Um, I really like, uh, they have a pretty flexible cord, but it's not too stiff or too flimsy. Um, the Chow Goos have a really nice stiff cable, which is good for some things, but I don't always need that you really You have the firm... red lace Chow Goos, I do. your the cords ones... are different than mine. Okay, um, I do. I have the the ones with the red sort of mesh look to them, and they're very firm, um, the cables are, which is really good for some things. Um, but I, as far as what I tend to use, it tends to be these um, that are semi-flexible, high, high, uh, interchangeables um and i don't have the large set i only have the small set which is twos to eights i think you have the diecraft heavy metals as well i do have the high the diecraft heavy metals um and those are there's six tips and they range in size from zero to three so there's us zero to three so zero one one and a half two two and a half three mm -hmm. one two three four, yeah um and uh, if I were to go back, I probably wouldn't purchase them. They're really nice and really sharp, and the cables are great, but I just don't do enough fine lace knitting where I think I would need interchangeable You use them mostly to Magic Loop socks, yes. correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, they are an investment, so if I were to go back, I probably wouldn't have purchased them just because I don't see myself using them enough to vet, to offset the value. So things to think about when you're buying interchangeable needles are because a lot of interchangeable needles come in different size sets now, to think about the sizes that you use most often in your knitting, whether it's twos through sixes or eights and above type thing. Um, I use mostly, I think my range would be four, five, six, seven, eight maybe um, mm -hmm. that I use most often. And that's when we get to fixed circulars, that's what most of my signatures are, are in that range. Um, cords, whether or not you like a more flexible cord or a more stiff cord, and mm -hmm. most yarn shops will allow you, if you're going to lay down the $200 for the Addy Turbo Clicks, or you're going to lay down however much money, um, we didn't talk about, uh, but neither of us have the Knitter's Pride, but Knitter's Pride does make a lot of interchangeables yeah, um, that's true. that are really good. Yeah, I don't own any just because I already have so many. I really, I don't need. Yeah, anymore, they but. they came onto the market um, a little bit late for us because we already had so many. Saying that after we just said I bought two interchangeable sets this summer, but you know, um, they, they just... do have really great fixed like the Knitter's Pride Nova, the yes. metal. Um, they're metal and they have a black cord and they're very inexpensive. I want to say like seven or eight dollars per needle. Um, and I really like them for a fixed needle. Yeah. Um, I've only used the small gauge one, the sock size ones. I haven't used anything above that. But So something else to think about with interchangeables and fixed circulars to some degree is the needle size. So the needle tip size, some people prefer a shorter needle tip size. Mm -hmm. um, like a four inch, some people prefer that six inch. It's all how you knit and how you, because Leslie is like this. She likes to butt like that, and I'm, I don't knit like that. It's yeah, all when how. I, well, when I knit my whole palm, everything pushes against it. So mm -hmm. I find it very uncomfortable to use like a four inch shaft, 
um, because I feel like I'm constantly trying to grab something that's not there. And that's just the way that I knit, right? Different people. Knit. Plus, I have large hands. If I had smaller hands, I probably a four inch would be fine. Yeah. But um, and then there are the nine inch circular needles that some people use for socks. So and the smaller the rule of thumb is the smaller you want your diameter to be on a fixed circular, or even um, uh, any kind of circular needle. So if I want a nine inch, the tip length is going to have to get smaller to mm -hmm. uh, to work with that cord. Twelve inches the same way. I w I use a lot of twelve inch fixed circulars at Esol's thumb. Um, for baby hats, because I do do a lot of baby hat knitting, so I do use, and they probably have three inch tips. I think the nine inch circulars tend to have like a two inch tip size on the needles. So if you're one of those people, but that's that, where you you can only use maybe two fingers to hold the needle. So if that bothers you, and that's primarily why I'm not a nine inch circular needle person, is that that doesn't work well with my style of knitting. Yeah, I mean there are some people that swear by them and my hat's off to you like I, I couldn't make it work it would be great if it could because it cuts down on the need for moving a needle around mm -hmm. or switching from one needle to the other if you're magic looping or using two um, but I just I can't do it <laughs> so with thick circulars we both really really like signatures mm -hmm. including Especially their convertibles for lace and I will say for what it's worth and this is just my personal opinion. If you are knitting lace, don't use an interchangeable needle if you can avoid it. Use a fixed needle because no matter who the maker is, there's you run the risk of that thing coming undone and you losing all those stitches. And I've done it before and it's not a pretty sight. Like there's little bits of lace you can fix. You can rip back and do surgery and fix. Mm -hmm. But when it's a lot, it's really, really hard and heartbreaking. So I... If you're doing something very intricate, I would not use an interchangeable needle. But that's my opinion. Or you could put in a lifeline every once in a while, so if yeah, it does do break. That, but yeah. <laughs> you could be smart and do that. That would be great too. But um, most of my fixed circulars are either the signatures or they are addies because when I first started knitting that's what was on the market that mm -hmm. had the sharpest tip. And so a lot of my fixed circulars are Addies. I've also gotten the Carbons, which I really, really enjoy. Um, those are made by Knitter's Pride. The Novas by Knitter's Pride I ordered when I was with, uh, I ordered a couple, or I stopped at a yarn shop and got some when I was spent the summer with Leslie because mm -hmm. I didn't bring all my needles with me and I needed a size 8, 16 inch circular because I knit my hats on size 8, 16 inch circulars 90% of the time. Um, I'm trying to think what other fixed circulars I use. Leslie tends to magic loop everything, so she does. Yeah, I do. Um, just because it's easier for me and I feel like I can pull the cables or the tips up and let the uh, project, you know, rest on the cable and I don't have to worry about it falling, coming off no matter yep. where I am on the row. So that's just my preference. But um, And Signature does sell um, the things that... And so do nitpicks, but the little stoppers that you can put on. Mm -hmm. That um, you can, you can unscrew your needle tip and screw on the little stopper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I think that's about it for us for needles. I'm sure we're missing some for double points. I have mostly, um, I started with Brittany's. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's 90% of my collection. I've added Chagus and Haya Hayas. And then in smaller sock sizes, I um, use mostly signatures. But, so, when talking about needle tip um, and fiber, if you have a fiber that you're piercing with the needle tip, um, you want to go to a more dull tip needle versus a sharp tip needle. If it's got, like, a chain construction or something that you can easily get yeah. between the plies, it's not tightly applied, try a duller needle tip and that should help you out a little bit. Yeah, and that's um, prevalent in a lot of like the char charity knitting where you tended to use like an acrylic or, um, and there a lot of the time it's like sort of cable plied on itself um, and it's easy to pierce that with a sharp needle. So you do have to go a little blunter. Um, and I've, even working with my own hand spun sometimes, if I did not ply it super tight, I tend mm -hmm. to try to use a duller needle tip. So I think that's it for our thoughts on needles. Was there anything else that you needed to add? Uh, no. Um, 
if I were to recommend one particular interchangeable set, I would recommend Hi Hias personally. Um, I get a lot of use out of my Hi Hia metal um, interchangeables. That's me personally. If I were to recommend a fixed set or a fixed type of needle, it would depend on your budget. I like the Hi Hias fixed as well, but the signatures are also quite lovely. So. I love my signatures. I work my projects around what I can put on my signatures. So, <laughs> and what signatures I have free. Um, we do not have a book review this week. We do not because we wanted to try to keep it a little bit shorter than usual. Um, but we do have some favorite things we want to talk about. Laura went to a festival this weekend. I did. I went to the Oxford Yarn Festival um, this weekend, which is sponsored by Knit One, which is the shop, the knit shop in mm -hmm. Oxford. They had, um, I want to say, like six to seven vendors. Primarily, um, there was just Lost City Knits for yarn, and then a good bit of fiber and pottery. There was a sewing machine, embroidery machine thing. Um, oh. There was a good variety of people. Um, so I was really, really good because I went in Knit One, and they're starting to carry Swan's Island, and they had my Atosh Vintage and sock um, there so I was really really good I didn't pick up anything there and what I did get from the festival is I got one skein because I've been wanting to try Lost City Knits Worsted for a long time and I really wanted a sweater's worth of this um, this is their hard working worsted but I just got the one skein I'm going to do it's 320 yards of a 100% merino in the extra virgin colorway oh nice um, I like that it's got that subtle mm -hmm. dark spot in it. Yeah, it's got a little bit of character to it. It's definitely a semi-solid. Um, and they're just super, super nice there. So I picked up a skein of their worsted. I am planning on doing a worsted weight shawl. I have 320 yards, so if y'all have one in mind or have a pattern that you've worked on that you just love, let me know. I do have a lot of um, like Dreaming Color Classy that I could, if it was a striped thing, I have yeah, the Cloud the Jungle. Mm -hmm. So if it is a contrast one. I do have around 300 yards of another one that I could use as well. Um, so that's what I purchased. And while I was there, they were nice enough to give me something to give away to y'all. So, and Chris made sure that I could pronounce it correctly before I left. He knows <laughs> it's like me. he's seen our show. <laughs> yes. uh, this is the Talamina Shawl. It is named after an area of um, it's kind of like a road that runs from Oklahoma to Arkansas. That's pretty. Yeah, let me get it nice and in there. It's really, really pretty. Denise does a great job. Um, Denise Bell, of uh, her designs are just epically gorgeous. She does a lot of lace that are just so pretty. Um, so this calls for 700 to 1,000 yards of Oak Barn Maria lace and he picked out the color, which I love. It's cocksure. And it was actually the colorway that, I, like, I was wearing a sweater. My, um, Volmiza sweater, which was almost the same color. So it matched me perfectly. Cool. So obviously, it has to go to one of you. <laughs> it's so pretty. It's 100% merino lace, 1,000 yards, just really, really nice stuff. So he gave us the, um, the shawl pattern and the lace to give away to one of you. So we'll have that contest. Um, I'll link you to their site and you can talk about what your favorite product is that they have, whether it be lace or um, yarn, I should say, or one of Denise's lovely patterns. Yeah, so, she and has I, a, quite a few want, really nice patterns. Yeah, she's got some gorgeous stuff. And I got to hang out with them. I got to hang out with uh, Little Bit Acres and Brenda. Um, you're just the gorgeous bats. Um, I got to hang out with Absolute Wonder, Ginger, mm -hmm. and Holly Memphis, and it was just overall, and it, I got to meet some new people, so it was lots and lots of fun. I had a great time. I sat mostly at the Memphis Knitting Guild's booth and just chilled and knit, so lots and lots of fun. It's a good little show. It's not one that I would drive hours to go see, right. but if you're within, like, 45 minutes, they had animals, um, which I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> like I know what a llama and alpaca looks like, um, and sheep, and I know the person who actually owns them, so I've seen them before. But if you're in the Memphis area, it's worth definitely going to, or the Oxford area. 
So, okay. Um, we do have a giveaway. Let me we pull do. up my random number generator here. Um, and this is for the Scrumptious Knits collection. Which is so cool. Mm -hmm. This is uh, volume three. And Leslie picked out the prompts, y'all, just so you know. I did? Yeah. You told me to have them define the word scrumptious or what they think about when they think oh, of the yeah, word yeah, scrumptious. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. I haven't been online much this week. <laughs> I haven't either. The new okay. house doesn't have internet yet. Oh, yeah. Well, that so, makes a difference, right? It does a little bit. I'm working okay. crazy. This is between two and what number? 203. Two and 203. Okay. I have not generated the number yet. So let's hit the button. It says number 111, which should be on your fifth page. Okay. I love all the people who put truly scrumptious from Chitty Chitty Bing Bing. <laughs> awesome. What was the number 111? Yes. You said? 111. That's what you said? Correct? 111. Yes. Okay. It is Pat B. Knitting. Oh, cool. So, I know. Scrumptious. Scrumptious is the time to knit, even if you ha and if you have a glass of really fine red wine and a new Knit Girls podcast, all the better. <laughs> She's so sweet. Aww. So, Pat B. Knitting, if you will contact Leslie, you don't call me Les, she will hook you up. Yep. PM me on Ravelry, and I'll get you in touch to get your free copy sent to you. Congratulations. People put Willy Wonka, too, which makes me happy. Ooh, scrum diddly umptious, yeah. I know. Scrum diddly umptious bar. Um, other things to talk about. Team Sasquatch is going hardcore for the Nadine Olympics project. I have my beads. I found them in the stash. So I am knitting Glitz at the Ritz by Helen Stewart. Here is my yarn. Here are my pretty silver beads. So I will start that um, when the Olympics start, which is, what is that, the 5th? I think it's the 7th. Okay, the 7th. It's all in the in the Team Scott's Quest yep. group. Definitely. Never, never take our word for it. Go look. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can cast on, you can swatch ahead of time. That's, that's just considered, you know, like practice. And then you can cast on during the opening ceremonies. Yep. Um, other important things that are taking place this week. My little sister is turning 27. So, I think she's turning 20. No, she'll be 28. Ha, ha, ha. So, Beck will be 28. My little so, sister is 29. Okay. So, Beck, who's Lemon Half, who helps mod our group, wish yep. her happy birthday and harass her in general because she <laughs> needs it. You're such a good sister. I am. I'm the bestest. Um, we, we do have to get it out of the way before the, you know, annual month-long celebration of Laura begins. <laughs> That is coming so. up soon. <laughs> um, so that is about it. Is there anything else that you need to talk about? Mm -mm. No, I haven't decided on a knitting Olympics project yet or if I'm going to even do one. So I think you should finish your spinning and you should knit that. I think that'll be fun. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. That's a lot to, to finish spinning it and plying it and knit it in three weeks is a lot though so we'll see maybe you have like seven days though before it starts well five days so yeah maybe we'll see mm -hmm. if i can get as much spinning if i can finish the spinning before the opening ceremonies yeah then yes i will make that my project but we'll see like i've had a weekend day in there where i could spin a lot so we'll see yeah um but yes that's it uh it looks like we actually kept this under 45 minutes wow so pretty um, awesome yeah so we will uh catch up with you guys next weekend until right. then we hope you enjoy the big game if you're in the states <laughs> and um we'll talk to you then bye y'all